Hi, thank you for joining us for PSQM's online lecture series, which will be an overview of total quality management. I will be your moderator for this um, event. My name is Pam Thumbothoen, and I'm the Associate Manager for uh, Strategy and Business Development in Polymed Corporate. So we have an exciting event prepared for everyone today. We have none other than Dr. Bernadette Hogar Manlapat, who will share her insights on the importance of quality management and how it can improve the overall performance of a hospital. With the rapid changes the healthcare industry has seen in the past year, it's important to make sure that the quality keeps up with the changes that we make. A few reminders before we begin, please keep your microphones and videos switched off. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to type it in the chat box below and we'll get to it during the Q&A portion after Dr. Bernadette's presentation. So before we get to our speaker, I would like to invite the President and CEO of MGHI, Dr. Edwin Mercado, to deliver the opening remarks. Oh, thank you, Pam, and good morning, everybody. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Bernadette Hogar-Mandapat, the immediate past president of the Philippine Society for Quality in Healthcare, uh, and of course, the organizing team led by Dr. Gina Nasaret. So it's very timely, uh, even in the times of COVID, to focus, of course, on quality improvement, uh, given that uh, we are under a lot of uh, financial stress and also uh, process uh, improvement uh, needs because of the potential uh, infection. But uh, uh, quality improvement is very important. In fact, uh, uh, I think it started with the landmark publication of uh, the Institute of uh, uh, Institute of Medicine regarding uh, human error uh, in the book To Air is Human and uh, Building a Safer Health System where it's highlighted that in a hospital setting, actually, we lose the equivalent of two Boeing 747 crashing every day because of mistakes and safety issues. Whenever there's a plane, uh, ano, like in Indonesia right now, it's a big issue. But in healthcare, medyo tatatago eh. And uh, it's very important what we focus on, of course, these quality initiatives because at the end of the day, that is aligned with the UHC's objective of making healthcare equitable. So if we cut off of the fat and also the inefficiencies, then definitely we lower our cost and we uh, hopefully deliver the savings to our patients. So it's very important that uh, the whole organization aligns with uh, these quality improvement initiatives and uh, uh, precisely why sabi namin ni na Dr. Gina, let's go back to basic. Uh, and then also uh, make it a way of life because it's part of our uh, DNA, eh? make quality a way of life and not force it upon us, but make it also parang part of our culture. So at the end of uh, the session, we hope to also get some uh, thoughts again on how to move forward in improving our quality improvement initiatives, especially our quality circles and all the initiatives done by PSQM in terms of our uh, PVRs or our uh, variance report, uh, which we currently are taking track of. So thank you again very much, everybody, and I uh, hope to listen to Dr. Uh, Hugar's uh, lecture and also uh, to learn from the discussions later. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Edwin. So again, we'd just like to give a welcome to everyone joining us here today on Zoom and on our Facebook Live uh, page. So we have all our MDs, our department heads, and people from um, around the QualiMed Health Network. So uh, so let's get to it. Our speaker for today, as Doc mentioned, is Doc Bernadette Hogar Manlapat. She has a wide range of knowledge and involvement in the quality and risk management system, both as a speaker and auditor. Uh, ensuring processes are established, maintained, and implemented. She's a fellow and immediate past president of the Philippine Society for Quality in Healthcare. She's also the co-chair of the PNP Health Service Advisory Council, a certified assessor of the Philippine Quality Challenge and Philippine Quality Awards of the DPI. She's also a certified IRCA lead auditor. She will be sharing her insights and experiences on quality management and continuous improvement in the hospital setting. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Bernadette Hogar. 
thank you, Pam. And of course, thank you, Dr. Mercad, for um, welcoming me into your family. Um, the Philippine Society for Quality and Healthcare since the 1990s. I know some of you have not been born yet, but uh, it's an advocacy that we believe that uh, not only in sure. the industry, in other industries, but especially in healthcare, we need to have quality and total quality management. From your uh, organization, the quality med really speaks uh, highly of quality. So thank you very much for it. Share my screen. There you go. Um, before I begin, just a little uh, background. The Philippine Society for Quality and Healthcare um, had been in the Philippines since 1990s. With, uh, part of the Department of Health and the Philippine Society for Quality and the DPI and end um, up for um, improvement in quality healthcare. Nahuhuli na nga yung quality in healthcare because uh, manufacturing airlines had been here and you read and you remember quality health. And now it's very timely that we are in a pandemic. Um, COVID is here. Quality is important. So, what is uh, lacking in this picture? This is total, total quality management. Others call it integrated quality management. Others call it PQM. But what is um, what is lacking in this picture? Um, when you say PQM, because it's not only PQM or total quality management. It involves quality circle, the risk, of course, before you getting into getting into a, the success of a PQM, you have to have your steps. In these steps, um, we adopted the Baldrige. The Philippines Baldrige um, counterpart is the Philippine quality. So PQM is a management system, as everyone knows. This is a it's a customer focused organization. And involves all stakeholders in continual improvement. What do you mean all stakeholders? Hindi lang ba siya customers? No, hindi lang sa staff? No, everybody, every interested party, the one looking at you, your statutory body, accrediting bodies like PhilEL, um, your certifying bodies in ISO, Department of Health, your governance, the board of directors, down to your customers, your relatives, especially your community. Uh, and... Um, and your partners are all your uh, stakeholders. So everybody comes into total quality control. So um, we have strategies, we need data. Of course, we need effective communications. We need uh, an effective plan. Of course, how we deliver the plan and how we monitor the plan. It is the integration of quality discipline. So there are eight elements of PQM. Customer focus, total stakeholders involvement, process centered. It is an integrated system. What do you mean by integrated system? You have quality, safety, and risk. And of course, you have your ethical framework when you decide. It has a strategic and systematic approach, continual improvement. Because uh, when you have an outcome, you, you're happy with the level of this. You have to monitor trends. And uh, are you happy with it? The customer is happy with this, you need to improve because you always raise the bar on quality. And of course, you're basing our facts and decision making based on the data. And of course, the moral, mental, and uh, physical aspects and the totality of uh, the system is uh, part of your decision making. And how do we communicate success and how do we deliver it here? So your customer focus again, uh, who is your customer? Those are, as mentioned, are your interested parties. Am I interested? Well, not interested. How do you make them interested? So ultimately, it, this determines the level of quality. So training your employees and the staff is part of it. Integrating quality into the design process is part of it. You upgrade your IT, hardware, software, peopleware. But at the end of the day, your interested parties determine whether the efforts were worthwhile. 
you've done everything you're so happy you think you're uh in a in a in a box that says wow we're very good you look at the mirror and every day you see i am great i am good but when you say total quality management the other party the one who mirrors you who sees you the interested parties determine really and your uh, tangibles like your um bed occupancy rate the outpatient will come back and and so forth and so on the social media will tell you really this are worthwhile efforts that you are doing so uh the total stakeholders involvement in is involved is important as mentioned because they are your interested parties all stakeholders participate in working toward common so first you begin with a small group and then you cannot argue with success because your stakeholders are committed and um your environment is enabling you to work towards quality and the bayon and uh, that's how you engage your everybody else you have high performance work system you integrate continuous quality improvement and of course your self managed work teams um other quality quality circles are actually empowerment of your success and of course your process centered uh process both internal and external is important and of course you have to have interconnecting decisions hindi na siya ngayon vertical mula baba pataas taas baba sa gilid and works diagonal um our organization now becomes um uh, a flat environment Ibig sabihin, an open door policy is important. I can say that I am safe because quality is safety and risk free. I can knock on your door or on the side of your door because your door is open and I can tell you, hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Do you know their uh, names? Because everything starts with one hello. So you have to say hello to them. That is the beginning of total quality management. And of course, your micro processes, your business performance must be monitored and communicated continuously. We have a communication plan with you. Um, other people have the balance scorecard, both for communication and for your monitoring. Uh, there are um, initially Captain and Norton in 1990 delivered um, a four perspective in the balance scorecard. Now, recently, this, there's a fifth perspective, the corporate social responsibility part your integrated system and of course um we have our voltage award criteria and your iso 9000 standards for your integrated system and of course your unique work culture is important this connects customers employees and other stakeholders above down and sideways. so as a strategic and systematic approach we have this and you have to have your mission vision your quality med knows everybody since 2010, almost all of our healthcare organizations have mission, vision, and core values. It's a requirement of you. More than a requirement, how did you uh, measure this mission, vision? Especially when we started in 2010, 2009. It is now 2020. After 10 years, did we improve? Did our strategic planning work? I hope it did. Because I know in QualiMed, you're really doing it um especially when we when you're going to uh to a quality med organization you feel that you're uh, important because people welcome you so i saw that and congratulations for that so again are you happy with that you say people thank you they commend you you have your customer satisfaction survey those are the the tangibles that you are looking at so um this is a large aspect of total quality um but this beyond this there are ways to become more competitive because uh you always raise the bar every day you compete among yourselves uh you have your quality circles and it's a more effective and in, in stakeholders so uh there is uh, what you say let's see that's in uh in uh, baldridge you look at your levels you look at trends you compare yourself with the same industry outside your industry and uh, of course and I, how did you innovate in this and how did you? And we base your decision making on facts, accuracy, action, con consensus, allow prediction, and forecast outcomes. Because um, you cannot have um, decision if you don't, do not base on facts. Here, say, 
Sabi nila magaling daw tayo. Where is your tangible data on how you are magaling? You have to have indicators for you to know. Again, how do you communicate? Do you have a communication plan? Sabi nila, pinaka-important na communication daw eh, yung ating uh, social media. Who are, how do you now um, distinguish fake news from real news? So we have to have our own data. You have this actually motivates our staff when we talk to them. We involve the strategies and timeliness. And now your objective for communication plan should be smart, specific, measurable, attainable, or resilient na. Because of the pandemic, you become resilient. Of course, you have timeliness. Uh, when you set your goals, you have to have uh, a time when you should accept this goal. What is your vision? What is your mission for the year? So how do we implement this? Uh, again, plan. What we, what are your plans? Your plans are your visions, your mission, your core values. How do you do this? This is your process. How do you monitor this? Do you have a balanced scorecard, a report card? Um, how do you measure the involvement of your people? And how do you act on it? So, sabi nila, um, yan, but where is it? You have to, for unit, you have to measure yourself, individual, unit, kung meron kayong division, directorate, up to the board, they have to report because everybody should report because uh, we should have a straight line, a sideway line, but there is a way and how we do this. So there are the seven basic tools of total quality, quality management. Um, there is a check sheet, sabi nila. Ano ba yung check sheet na to? This tells you it's a pre-made form gathering type of data. So you have to gather your data. It is important. Ang boring naman yan, gathering data. Hindi. Ayang kaya nyo yan. Um, if we were together, papakuha niyo kayo na one sheet, sheet four sheet of paper. Imagine niyo yung organization nyo. What are the things that you should be looking at? Sample lang to. Sample. You look at the, you can see the screen. O medyo maliit yung screen. Titigan nyo. Rusted items. Items with scratch. Dirty, broken. Yung maganda, di ba? Um, at present, us usually they now look at um, right item use. Positive item use. We also monitor the positive side. We measure your strength. And that is an important part of um, total quality management. Again, we have a Pareto chart. The chart shows that 80% of problems are linked to 20% of causes. Ano pa yun? Um, when you solve this kind of problem, you identify them. And uh, this falls into different categories. Si Pareto to eh. Ayan siya, oh. The Pareto principle tells us efforts you use 20% of effort because you prioritize this, but the results are 80%. So you only do such things, ngayon nga hindi na lang 2018, meron na kayo 1090, meron pa kang 5% effort na lang, but you get 95% of results. So you have to compare what are the efforts and you should also prioritize your efforts. Hindi kagalaw ng galaw eh. Meron tayong mga tinatawag na SOL. Doktor, na nasa, nasa Gina, ano bang ating ibig sabihin ng SOM? May mga space occupying vision. If you want to be a space occupying vision, ano ka eh, parang bibong bata ka eh, pasok ka ng pasok, andun ka, aga-aga mo, tapos nag-gabi-gabi uh, ka na umuwi. But, but uh, do you really do something? You should have an effort. Um, the least effort that you do, the more that you have in outcomes. And, the less um, pagod that you have and more productive your organization. Productivity. We're talking about productivity here. Um, again, Ishikawa diagram or what we call a Fishikawa diagram. This diagram allows you to visualize all possible causes of a problem or effect and then you categorize them. Siman, method, material, measurement, machinery, eh yung pang anim na em environment. So, meron tayong effect of cause and effect analysis. The whys, we have to look at this, and this is part of our system. So, in order for you to improve, you have to identify your problem. Can you see the different whys, whys, whys? This is 
um, having this effect. So your processes are man, material, method, machinery, measurement, and of course your environment. And the results will be an effect and the problem will go away or improve up to a certain level. So we have um, leading indicators and your lagging indicators. Um, PISCO had been advocating CQI since 1996. So um, you've heard of the group going around organizations, both private um, and public organizations, to assist organizations in um, dealing with the cause and effect of your problem analysis. Is this really an effect or is it a cause? Are you the outcome or are you the problem? So we uh, assist you in all of this. So you're welcome to ask later how we will do it because uh, this is another session. We're only given so much time, but this is um, on how we report and how we do and really scientifically and uh, systematically do our cause and effect. So we have to be proactive in all of this. And of course, preventive. Before a problem exists, that is risk-based thinking. You have to look at possible things that might happen. Um, again, uh, the Philippines is a very dynamic country. What do you mean? Kasama tayo sa ring of fire. Kasama tayo dun sa um, Mihayan. Nag, uh, uh, every end of the year, magkakaroon tayo ng mga major typhoon. Now, Every country has this. So we have to prevent this. Our, our structures um, proactive in the, uh, are we, uh, our system proactive in preventing this risk. So we have to look at this. So again, we have a control chart. This chart is graphical description of how process and results change over time. Makikita mo. Makikita mo. Pwede mo siyang, do you have one, uh, do we need an IT to do this? Uh, it is good if you have an IT, but if you don't have, you can do this initially over over time because it's a description, the graphical description of how processes and changes over time. So this is how it looks. Ito yung control. Hindi na masyadong deal yan. We can do this. Um, it just tells you that uh, you're monitoring your changes of your process and it's a graphic. So again, there are the histogram bar chart where you can see your problems cause as well as your results cluster. Ayan siya. So scatter diagram, plus data on the X and Y. Makikita mo. Example to, actually, the negative tsaka linya. Sobra ka naman, Dr. Hogar. What are you talking about? Uh, simple explanation on this. Meron tayong mga variables. Dependent and tsaka independent. Um, yun na lang, beauty contest na lang natin. Meron ba kayong Mr. and Ms. Qualimed? So, so, marami tayong judges. Meron sa mga criteria for judging. Simple explanation of a scatter diagram. Meron kang ipoplot na ang scores para malaman mo kung bias o hindi bias yung judge. So, ipoplot mo siya sa linear. Ito, uh -huh. so, ang akala ko dito ay mataas ang grade. Pero ito, mababa ang grade ko. So, compared to other uh, si Simon, uh, sa talent show. So, the grade niya, si ganito ang ganyan. Tapos, ito, isa, lahat kayo, may halimbawa, lima kayo, apat, pare-pareho ng grade. There is a variant. So, makikita mo sa scatter diagram, kung meron siyang correlation or non-correlation of what you're grading. So, that's a simple way of doing it. But of course, with our organization, there are a lot of variables to consider, but you have to think of it as that way. It's easy to see, in a scatter diagram, if there is a variance, kung merong sample, may doktor ba na ito lang ang ginagawa? Uh, may variance eh, merong ibang ginagawa. Baka naman to, you look at it in a quality way, baka naman siya innovator. So you really have to follow it up. In quality, you don't, um, you don't uh, alienate everybody. If there's a variance, it means that either uh, there is, um, on a positive note, there is, an innovator that is uh, happening, an innovation that is about to happen in the organization. Again, your flow chart. This represents how different factors join in the process. Just like this. 
you start, sample, you admit, after you admit, you do this, and then the data, document, and then. So that's a simple way of doing it. It's a process. It's an activity to meet that new chart. And again, when you say CQI, the regulatory mandate of um, the little bench book, it's Administrative Order 2002. It's a requirement that every organization has a quality committee and a continuous quality improvement program. So, you hospital banyo, you healthcare organization banyo, mayroon CQI. It's a basic. You have to improve on this, and um, we have to have basic knowledge of this. And again, the Department of Health uh, mandates that every organization has a CQI. Um, again, this just show the administrative order that's been here since 2006. And uh, we have established our CQI program, which is part of the improvement program of the total quality management system. Um, Philip Benchbook tells you the same. RA7875, Section 1 and 2. IRI uh, tells you of uh, quality insurance. Um, Improvement programs. So this is the bench book that we know. Sabi, ah, yun pala yung kulay ng bench book. Oo naman, it's 2006, ganyan na po ang kulay niya. Yung kasi, yung iba, may naman refactured si bench book. Lalo na noong 2010. So this is the real color of the bench book. And there's a survey manual and self-assessment tool. This is the second edition. Um, a milder color. But nonetheless, there are criteria and evidence evidences for this. So you have your patients, right? It is part of your process. You have your performance area. If you don't have your um, balance scorecard with you, this may serve as your balance scorecard because uh, in other organizations, this is a um, standard or criteria and evidence where you look at things. Your patients' rights, patients' care, leadership, human resource management, Safe practice, improving performance, and so forth and so on. Um, the beauty of um, second edition of PhilHealth, meron na siyang financial management, which is important for a private organization. Um, and of course, the public um, or a government hospital, because in the government hospital, they also need to have funds and how to lobby for the Senate. Thank you. So it's a short, short, uh, I promise, Gina, it will be a short lecture because it's total quality management. I need not have a lot of lectures here. But uh, the floor now is open for questions. Gina, uh, may I see you or are you? Mampang. Hi, Dr. Bernadette. Thank you for that insightful presentation. I definitely was taking a lot of notes here on my own. So thank you again for sharing that with us today. Um, so now we'll open the floor to questions. If anyone would like to ask, please feel free to send in the chat box below. Or you may raise your hand so that you can ask Dr. Nadette directly. Doc, I'll, I'll point something out. One thing that I really took away from your presentation, I like how you emphasize the importance of communication. Because if there's one thing we've learned from the pandemic, the there's new, I'm breaking news every single day, and you know everyone's busy focusing on their daily tasks. That it's important to communicate the same thing throughout the whole organization for hospitals, three clinics, the ASC. So um, it's definitely something we need to strengthen, especially in times of crisis. No? the importance of communication in an organization. So, if anyone has questions? Hey. Okay. I have a question, Doctora, Doctor Mercado. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh. Yes. Uh, I say it came uh, like a, a pad before. Yung mga press gay ni 
report sa states, tapos parang uh, part ng compensation ng mga doktor, for example, is related to the uh, uh, first gainy uh, scores that are given by patients. But uh, it, it biases the doctor in terms of their treatment modalities. Eh? Like part yes. one, part of the survey, for example, is pain control. And since pain mm-hmm. control, uh, uh, yung mga doktor ayaw nang buma- mababa yung kanyang score, nagbibigay ng mga narcotics which ended up to the narcotic dilemma or the mm-hmm. epidemic right now in the States. So mm-hmm. how, how do you get now the feedback from the uh, patient stakeholder? Uh, short of giving the, as they say nga, giving the candy store to the kids. Kasi if you give the kids the candy store, they, they, they will uh, push you to, ano, di ba? Mababayas yung... To get more. Yung oh. to, eh, to get oh. more. So uh, how do you get the feedback from patients now? Um, again, uh, prior to a feedback from a patient, ang number one natin as a practitioner, we have to educate them. So education is important. Uh, again, as uh, previous in sa Makita Mi Ishikawa slide, preventive eh. Uh, uh, one of preventing them to from giving these uh, scores, na exuberant scores or very low scores that we are having, we have to educate the public because um, what they know from a fact, di ba, yung ang nakikinig na, nakikita lang nila yung what they look at social media. Yung ating social media, medyo, hindi siya medyo, it's really, hurting a lot of people and, of course, improving a lot of people. We have to bombard more as healthcare organizations. We have to bombard more the social media on what is the right thing and what is an ethical thing to do. Again, uh, as mentioned before, yung ating decision-making process, we have to have an ethical framework. We base on facts. We base on things. And uh, we um, we handhold, handheld yung mga community eh. Now, um, not only the doctor before, kasi di ba yung mga 10 years ago, 50 years ago, the doctor dictates eh kung ano yung binibigay. Ngayon, andyan na si patient. We have to ask the patient, constantly monitoring them. And this one actually decreases your lead litigation sa legal. Pag kilala mo yung pasyente, whether whatever happens to your your patient, nagkaroon ka man ng morbidity, lumamahaling ka nila and their family. So, number one rule, um, and even my colleagues in legal tells us that um, um, you have to know your patient and you have to educate them. So, yung ating mga grading na sinasabi, of course, it, it became a fad. Now, nawawala na yun eh. Because of the pandemic, nawala siya eh. But naridig mo pa rin. How to counter, counteract that or prevent that, we have to be more proactive. So, I hope it answers your question. Yeah. And again, pag sa pagpasok pa lang yun, or hindi kasi sa pumapasok sa clinic mo, virtual clinic na lang tayo ngayon eh, doon pa lang nakikita mo na. Meron sila. Um, so, sana i-quote si one of the one of the politicians. Pag nag, nagpapak, nag-ano siya, nagpe-press con, meron na siyang nakasulat doon. Meron na siyang mga indicator doon kung anong gagawin mo. Uh, uh, that actually inculcating into the system of uh, your stakeholders what they should be doing. So, less na yung kanilang mga mitigation. So, nagiging proactive na tayo. Dr. Mercado. Wait, I hope that helps. As yes, an anesthesiologist, yes. I understand that. Anesthesiologist. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh. So, oh. Oh. so, at least sa Philippines, mahigpit sila eh. Lalo na yung meron tayong program to come. But it really uh, um, regulated the drugs. Kailangan may yellow pad ka. If you don't have the yellow pad and they, and they see that you're not uh, doing a narcotic uh, safe environment, pupuntaan ka talaga nila eh. And uh, FDA and uh, PDEA really is proactive. So it actually helps. Yun ang ating advantage over the other countries. Okay. Correct. That's right. Merong pang question dito, sorry. May question dito, uh, how do you develop a culture of quality in the hospital? Um, number one, everything Gina, Gina question ko. It, um, it doesn't... Hindi kasi nawawala-wala ako eh. 
Ah, no, wala, wala. Wala yung internet, oo. Oh. <laughs> Ayun, nayak ako eh. So, yeah. Uh, it doesn't uh, come overnight. You have to know, number one, you have to know people. Um, you cannot just tell them, this is it and this is what we're doing and uh, show it into them that this is what you should do. Of course, initially, they will follow, but uh, when you develop a culture, you should know them. It starts with small circle, yung sabi nga nila, quality circle. Ideally, uh, ang mga quality circle mo, uh, 6 to 10. Oh, 6 to 10. Bakit? 4 to 10, sabi nila. Um, bakit 2? Oh, mahirap ka naman makipag- uh, Makipag-away sa sarili mo, di ba? Huwag yung gagawin yung delikado yun. <laughs> Bakit 10? Kasi more than 10, when you do a quality circle, it becomes a party. So, ideally, uh, 2 to 10 or six, 5 to 10 lang, 5 to 8 people ang nasa quality circle. So, anyone can see. Tapos pag nag-okay na yung sa quality circle mo, trickles yun eh. Lumalaki na lumalaki. It improves the culture of uh, everybody. Nahahawa mo siya. And if the quality, once the quality circle becomes successful, nobody argues with success actually. Hindi talaga nakita na. Pag nakita nga nila, di ba success, uy, maganda yung ginagawa nung kabila. Paano kaya namin magagaya? So you have to communicate that. Again, Miss Pam is telling us community is vital. Kapag na, nagkaroon ka ng success, share mo. And, uh, and again, close your mind. Uh, Magstopyan mo na kayo. Magstopyan mo. Thank you. Indeed. We have another question po in the chat box from Ms. Sheila. What do you mean by process centered in PQM po? Uh, you have to you have to have a system. Yung processes. Ano ba yung um it's good. I know all the hospitals now have processes. Ano yun? Look at the activity. Yung activity ka eh. Ano ba yung number one mong gagawin? Number two. Number three, is this process great? Uh, ano po ba within the, within your, ang health organization, sa po, um, outpatient, so, dito sa yung pasyente, consult, outpatient, and they're happy. But in between that, meron kang mga, ano eh, influencers at the site. You have to look at that. During the Para sa yung center mo, your process, you have to go back to your, to your goal. Ano yung step by step? Yun ang ating sabi ng process and internal external. Thank you. I hope it helps. Sige. Yes, thank you. If there are any other questions, please feel free to add it in the chat box. To comment lang on Dr. Pugarman Lapats and Gina's ano, yung meron si Jeff Bezos na ano eh, na nakakatawang rule. Sabi niya, if uh, two pizza is not enough to uh, satisfy a group, then the group is too big. It's uh, oh, Jeff true. Bezos' two pizza rule. Pizzas are uh, ano, deficient or insufficient to, task, to satisfy the group. Napakalaki na ng group. Yes. Mm -mm. yes. Very true. Yes. Ang hirap talaga mag-create ng culture, eh, no, Gina? Kasi yes. even if you went through a lot of lectures siya, naturo mo na yung, mm -hmm. ano, yung root cause analysis, yung five wise na nasa fishbone, mm -hmm. naghihintay pa rin sila sa corporate to, ano eh, eh they should have ownership of the process, eh. Uh -oh. uh, we might, uh, we might start... top-down yung gusto nila mangyari, dapat uh -oh. sila yung initiate eh. Uh Oo. -oh. Um, you start with the culture by asking them to form groups. Pwede kang mag-encourage eh. Um, in other organizations, sir, um, meron silang mini, uh, may mga awards eh, award, awards, uh, uh, awards sa mga uh, organization. Example, for, for quality circle, meron kang gagawin program, tapos, uh, Mag among the division muna, mag-compete sila. Kung sino yung mananahal sa division na yun, will compete with another division. Tapos pag, uh, after that, the whole hospital, may interdivisional program, may award ka, then you join. You join external uh, 
award giving bodies. Uh, and um, competitive and uh, yet they are engaged. So, ang ragwa ng governance system ng management, you encourage them to have quality service. At saka yung heart, kailangan medyo, hindi pala medyo, you have to be um, persistent and you have to have a heart and so on. Yes, actually, Dindi, uh, last year yata, yun o two years ago, pera lang kasi nangyari nga kasi itong pandemic. Mm -hmm. I was told by Dana, ano yun, kasama ko siya sa team sa, sa PSQN, na there's this ano, parang activity nila na nagkakaroon ng contest per hospital. Ngayon, mm -hmm. ang ginagawa to rin, sinisikret nila yung panlalaban nila sa contest kasi yun yung represent nila. Na, na parang quality improvement na imbis na imbis na umpisahan na nila kasi yun na nga yun, maganda ng gawin eh, inaantay pa nila yung ipasa sa contest yun kaya meron din namang ano, may competition naman kaya nakakatuwa din naman it's just that yun nga sana ang idea is hindi lang magsastop sa, sa PSQM yung quality dapat it should come from each and every individual na nandun sa loob ng hospital. Kahit na walang nakakakita sa'yo, naka, kumbaga, nasa loob mo na yung quality. Oh. Uh, tama ka dyan, uh, ano We actually even had a contest na the winner were sponsoring to the Healthcare Management Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, I-presenting yung paper and enroll. Pero yun nga, hindi, hindi na-sustain eh. Uh, tsaka siguro kulang nga yung recognition program natin uh, at saka yung publication ng mga results. Kung mapakita natin yung mga tools na sinasabi ni Doktora kanina, mga run charts at saka mga ano, scatter graph at saka yung ano, ma 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 mas may encourage natin eh kung visual. Yes, so... May internal na isa tapos may external judge para sabi, ah, oh, kaya ka lang naman nanalo. Oh. You, uh, you uh, discourage thoughts of uh, you know, biases. And, uh, so, Sige, kukuhain kitang judge. Sige, Gina. Marami pa kami pwedeng mag-judge. So, tinama ko dito sa ating panel yung um, training officer ng ISCUA, si Ma'am Farah. So, she's with us. And, uh, Of course, I told the Philippine site for quality and healthcare. Now the present is the periphery. But uh, after this, um, we will be handling with the quality med and this. So we're that's a uh, part of our advocacy. The quality improvements. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Doc Bernadette, we have a yeah, we have a few questions here from C. Doc James who in quality med Iloilo. Um, are there any qualifications to becoming the uh the heading the TQM or can it be done by anyone? Mm -hmm. Um they have at least um experience on quality. Um in other organizations okay, in the in excerpts now from a government uh government alumna hospital bigla siya inassign and uh wala siyang wala siyang magawa eh, kasi assignment eh. So what they did they train. You have to train for quality. May mga may mga trainings naman on quality. Marami na ngayon online. So you have to and number two, meron kang competency eh. Kailangan com, may competencies ka. Beyond competencies, you should have a heart. Kasi um, not everybody will follow you eh. all the time. So you should have a heart and a soul to uh, do quality. Um, and of course, people that will uh, be with you. Because uh, when you're uh, when you're doing something, you say, "Ay, pagod na naman." Kaya naman yun, meron na tayo. You will you hear that? Um, you hear otherwise. But uh, when you have a group and you're persistent and you believe that this will help you, and they will see that actually, eventually, people will see that that yes, this is really going to do it, and this will improve us. They will follow you. Even the board, even the chairman of the board, chairman, chairwoman, uh, will follow you. You have to make that step. 
Yes. Yes. So I guess anything can be learned along the way, but one thing that's important is the leadership quality and like you mentioned, the heart and the the, heart the soul to follow through. Mm-hmm. I like that. We have another question from Ashila. Um, how can we encourage mm. But you have also to rest na kailangan may work life balance tayo tinatawag. Kasi pag nasyado ka nang napagod, burn out yan, you should have a, a rest day for everything. I'm sorry, as you were yes. saying. Very true. Um, from Ms. Sheila, we have a question. She asked, how can we encourage each other to develop this quality culture? Um, daily. You have to show them the most important uh, feature is your actions and your beliefs. So you walk the talk. If you don't, don't mm-hmm. they don't see that uh, you're not doing it. You're doing, you're saying this and you're doing otherwise. Uh, they won't believe you. So respect is earned, um, and that is a uh, uh, core value. Yes, very true. Lead by, leading by example, and like you yeah. mentioned in your presentation earlier, yes. every day you raise the bar. Yes. You look yes. at the mirror and you raise the bar. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a question from Ms. Niani. She asked, is there a best tool to measure TQM? Um, there are a lot of tools, but no best tool. As it depends on the situation and uh, what um, what problem or concern that you have to address. Um, kaya nga merong certain scatter diagram, pareto, and so forth. Yung know, you know, control charts, yung mga processes. Mm-hmm. Eight, for Diva, call it 14 steps. For Diva, eight steps. But actually, it's plan do check. That's the best uh, method that you should do. In between that, may mga, may mga tools. Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess we also need to learn to adapt it to our own situation. So, yes. well. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there's a suggestion here to Doc Gina and the PSQM team. Maybe as part of the TQM uh, competition that we were talking about earlier that we do internally in QualiMed. Uh, one should be the, uh, people should also be judged by the level of implementation and engagement of the healthcare team. So maybe that's something we can take note for next year. Um, we have another one here, uh, another question. She said, hi, we are currently operating nationwide in the occupational health setting. Our culture is affected by different factors like the client's own culture um, or they're distributed in different geographical areas for their operations. How do they? How can people develop a solid quality-med culture despite the geographic um, distance? Again, quality-med is a mission, vision, core value, and ethical framework. You follow that, and you're on the same page. So that's how it works. Mm-hmm. It's like a guiding light now for everyone. Yes, uh, we want to achieve the same thing. And now with okay. that, you have you should have indicators on how you measure this. Yes. Mm-hmm. Correct. The, uh, we have a question. From mm. um, Dr. Tanyag, uh, maybe this is more directed. Uh, well, someone asked, is TQM the same with ISO? Um, ISO is a certified it's a tool to ensure TQM, but TQM is a uh, culture. And um, culture. we could have other certifying body, accredited, accrediting bodies. The important thing is how you use this uh, ISO standards or Baldridge criteria, GCI, accreditation guidance, so on and so on, on your uh, organization. That is TQM. Again, more of an everyday practice that people strive towards, yes. We have a question from Mr. Stephen Sullivan. Um, how can we motivate the TQM members not to see the TQM projects as a burden? Make it fun. <laughs> make it fun. Have make pizza. Fun. <laughs> yes, make it fun. There are a lot mm-hmm. and a lot of strategies. Gina, I mean, I learned from my... Oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> make it fun. Oh, dapat maging creative. Creative, you know what? Yes. Oh, oh. oh. Ayo ako nga nang tinitignan nila ang ang PSQM as parang auditor eh. Oh, diba? Okay. Dapat hindi ganun okay. eh. Oo. Oh, oh. Make it a game. It's an improvement tool. It's an improvement. It's actually a continual everyday improvement. For sure. 
makes people safe, makes people happy. Ultimate mm-hmm. goal is to be happy. To be happy, definitely. I mean, yes, a happy culture, happy. I'm sure it'll translate into our results in the hospital. Yeah. Uh, siguro, Gina nga, we celebrate the quick wins and the, ano, kasi, uh, in the, at the end, kasi ang recipient nung benefit mostly are the ano, eh, process owner. Eh. Kasi kayo yung mas ma mag improve yung efficiency nyo, mas hindi kayo mahihirapan, and then ultimately, even your KRAs will improve and obviously your your performance evaluation will improve. Mm-hmm. Celebrate small wins though. Mm-hmm. To answer also yung kay Liani, Liani, maraming tools eh. Iba-iba kasi yung mga process improvement study. Liani kasi is on the accounting and finance side. So, like implementation ng IT programs, ibang tools yung gagamitin noon. Sa medical, iba rin yung tools. So, iba-ibang tools, uh, medyo may may require, parang appropriate siya for certain processes. But you may integrate. Kasi integrated naman yung ating. But the end point naman is the same eh. Uh, and different standards for ano eh for for profession. So you have yeah. to follow that and uh, your TQM tools will help you improve on that basis. Tapos doctor yung accrediting bodies as uh, mentioned earlier. Ang TQM mm-hmm. is the whole culture, the different accrediting bodies iba-iba eh. IUSO is more processes, pero pag health related, it's GCI, Accreditation Canada, or NABH. Pero ang experience ng ibang hospital, sabi nila, if they follow, for example, the uh, GCI, tumataas ang cost of uh, delivery. Kasi uh, first world country standards, hindi eh. ka mag, pwede mag-repeat use ng consumables. Uh, may mga gano'ng issues eh. Uh, may may meron bang appropriate na accrediting body na Philippine context or a, a developing world context? For working sanitary, anyway, science tool, you know, the standards of Philip are good. What uh, for them to be accredited by ISPO, the standards ng PhilHealth. At least you have practiced this for two years, and though uh, we've recommended that to the government. So, magkaroon ng problem si Philip. Wala si Dodo eh. Tinanggal na yung accredit standards ng Philip. Tapos naging ano na. Tapos parang tawag mo doon. At the OH. At the Department of Health and Field Health Standards. They're good. Kailangan lang i-detailed at i-practice. For if what to recognize this. But there's a national, one of the domain, national standards adapted for each one. Um, the important thing here, you may integrate those standards of ISO, uh, JCI, ACI, and uh, I don't know, trend, and do you develop a culture around it? So, paano mo masasabi, why do you do accreditations to them? Kasi sila yung nag- they're actually validating that you're doing, what you're doing is right. An objective I to look at it. But it shouldn't um, it shouldn't um, increase your um, your mga financials. It actually should help your mm-hmm. kids. Actually, in JCI, dalwe eh, merong JCAHO, which is in the US, taka JCI, which is international. Yes. So, mm-hmm. iba niling standard na po nte. Mm-hmm. Yung JCAHO. Nag-integrate na sila uh, across the board, joint commission na ang tapos. Ah, iisa na lang, so... Iisa na lang, same, same governance. And there is Accreditation Canada International. Where you log in your, your um, support. Ang standards. Nag-launch din sila eh. Uh, pardon? The uh, NABH. National. Oh, ano ba siya? Uh, nag, uh, acceptable na sa Philippine market? Uh, merong, mer- there's one uh, somewhere 
um, they mentioned in Laguna, they they were accredited by NABH. And one of the in standalone clinic, multi specialty clinic, who uh, were accredited, they were accredited by NABH. I think it's that's Cabrini. Cabrini accredited ng NABH. Eh. I will ask if they are um it uh, actually these are part of their marketing team. And of course, the most important thing here, there are tools and uh, how we change your culture and how you come together to follow their standards. Whether it's Joint Commission, Akalita in Canada, or any it should assist us in our improvement, both for our culture natin and financially. in questions by a viber, huh? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Doc Edwin. Also, um, so if there are no further questions uh, being sent in the chat, Doc Bernadette, we'd like to thank you so much for joining us here today, um, and for sharing your insights and your experiences with the group. I think we had close to one hundred participants just on Zoom, and even more so on Facebook. So. Um, th thank you again for, for sharing that with us. Um, thank you, Dr. Edwin, for joining us too. And thank you to the PSQM team, Dr. Gina, Dana, Mike, for putting this event together. We look forward to the next PSQM um, lecture series. Um, so, uh, any take home yeah. message coming from, from Dr. Dindi? Can we ask her? Dindi? Yes, Dr. Uh, Gina. <laughs> uh, take home message, mo. Um, so anyway, <laughs> so uh, number one, uh, in total quality management, you should have a heart. Um, of course, you you improve people by training them. Number one, you do the statutory. Beyond that, you have to daily look at each other and um, encourage. You have to see if these people are doing good or not. When you when you look at a program, you have to uh, see what is the external. Again, you do a SWOT. External, internal, what is happening? You can't just uh, tell them you have to do this. Although you have to be insistent and persistent in telling them this. But of course, you look at the external. How can uh, they do things if uh, they have certain concerns, but they can be addressed? Again, with, uh, with communication, this may be addressed. It's a very important tool. You should have a communication plan in every program that you do. And you have to measure it. You have to have indicators for you to raise the bar of excellence. And uh, congratulations, QualiMed. By the name itself, QualiMed, really for quality uh, in, med in medicine and healthcare. And of course, the health network is QualiMed. It's really for quality. Congratulations. And uh, Gina, thank you for. Uh, for this uh, invitation and deeply honored inviting me to insight for talking. Thank you very much, Dindi, you know, for the very informative lecture. Marami salamat. Marami siya, eh. marami components ng PQM. You can just discuss it in so much because hindi na deadline ni Gina. Short lang daw because uh, agree. <laughs> More less lecture, more implementation. That is what quality. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Doc Bernadette. Thank you. If there's one thing I'll remember, it's that um for the TQM you really need to have the heart for it. So thank you for that message. Thank you also, Doc Gina, Doc Edwin, for joining us today. So that culminates our event for today. Uh, thank you everyone again for joining us, and we look forward to the next TQM. Uh, PSQM lecture series. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.